my channel or welcome back to my channel. I am Tyra Kell or Tyno Bench, whichever one you want to call me. And today we are getting to the first book review of 2023. Now, I really honestly, truly cannot believe that I've already finished a book. Last year, I struggled so much to read and to actually finish a book. I'm just, I'm just blown away. But I really, really, really like could not put this book down. This is my first Colleen Hoover book that I've ever read. And I do have her iconic um book, It Ends With Us. And then I also got part two, It Starts With Us. So I'll probably read that later on in the year. Maybe March. But Verity by Colleen Hoover, baby. She did not come to play when she when she wrote this book. Let me just say that I don't really, I don't know, like, this book to me was like a thriller with a pinch of smut. I, I, that's the term um, that I guess people use for a lot of books now. But like, I was like, this is not what I thought this book was about. So if y'all um, watched my previous video about my reads for the um, January I said like, oh, like maybe she's supposed to be like mirror, somebody's mirroring somebody or something like that. I was kind of a little bit low-key right, but like in real life, I was <laughs> all the way wrong. Verity One is the name of a person and I kind of like it. I kind of like it's different. It's different. But like when I first started reading this book, it started off with a death. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, what kind of book am I reading? Because like I told y'all, I don't read synopsis. Like, of course I know how to write them because duh, I'm an author. But I don't really read synopsis of other people's books because I want to be surprised. Like, I feel like if I read somebody's synopsis, then I'll know what's going to happen. So I like to be surprised and I was really surprised with this. So the book first off starts with, well, wait. If y'all not have read this book, do not watch this review. Okay, now, <laughs> let's go. So this book starts off with a death. And it's a very tragic death. Somebody getting hit by a car in their head, getting smushed and blood going everywhere onto this main character, Loen. So Loen is, I feel like the book wasn't really... Well, it's about Verity because, I mean, it's named after Verity. But it wasn't really about Loan. Loan was just a small piece of this. But, you know, it gave main character energy at the beginning of the book. But, like, throughout the rest of the book, it was just like, mm -hmm. So, Loan was this woman um, that lived by herself. Her mom had just recently died and she had had sexual relations with her agent they broke it off, but they still work together. And when this accident happened, she got blood all over her shirt. And so this dude like was like, hey, you okay? Da, da, da. Like, let's get you cleaned up. And so she gets cleaned up. He gives her his shirt. And it turns out um, she had this important meeting. And he was the one that was in the important meeting as well. So... You got both of them like acting like they don't, they haven't already met each other, whatever. So the deal was that Jeremy, Jeremy is his name. I don't know if I said it, but Jeremy, um, Jeremy's wife, Verity, got into a horrible car accident and she's brain dead. Not really brain dead, but her, her brain injury is severe. Like she can't walk. She can't talk right keep that in mind keep that in mind she can't walk she can't talk but they want to finish this series that she was working on because it has just so much momentum right now and right now she's incapable of completing the series so they want Loan to do it Loan is an author as well but she's like not like out there with it like she'll write a book push it out and it's like okay like let me go to the you know let me go to the next one I don't want too much attention you know Da, da, da. So she declines the offer. And it's a nice, you know, little set of money after Jeremy's like, hey, they lowballing you, ask for more money. Like, this series is worth much more. And so I guess, like, to me, when I was reading the book, I felt like Jeremy pressured her. 
Um, and I feel like from the very beginning, and I was right, because why are you going to pressure somebody into doing something and they said no? Anyways, so <laughs> she accepts it and then she goes out to their house. They live in like the middle of nowhere in a very nice house. And the only people that's there is Verity, Jeremy, and their son, Crew. Verity and Jeremy had twins, Harper and Chastin. I hope I'm saying her name right. But they died. And within like six months of each other. Very tragic. I was like, wow, that's like a lot of grief to be going through. Like, their twins, they both died in a short span of time. Your wife that got in a, like, a very bad accident. Just crazy. And so time goes on. Lowen is like reading all Verity's like manuscripts, trying to figure out like how to write these characters. Do, do, do. And then she started tripping. Now she starts tripping <laughs> because she read across this manuscript that Verity wrote about her life. And so in Verity's books, she like writes from the villain's point of view. But in her manuscript, she also wrote from her point of view, which was also, it gave evil. <laughs> I'm just going to be straight up. I did a small review on TikTok and I, I feel like everybody was a psycho. Some, somehow, some way. So it gave like a, I'm obsessed with Jeremy and I really hate these kids because they take in my love. Like all the love that Jeremy has for me, they're taking it away from me. And I don't like that. I don't really like my twin girls, but oh... I love Chastin. I don't feel in love with Chastin, so I don't really like Harper like that. And I, I didn't had a dream that Harper's gonna kill Chastin. And oh, that's that has came true because Chastin has died from a peanut allergy, and Harper hasn't cried or anything since her twin sister died. So now I'm gonna plot to kill Harper. I was, and you know. Lauren was reading this manuscript. Lauren's like, oh, like, I got to figure out, like, what's going on. And she freaked herself out because she read that manuscript. But, like, I, like, again, you've read this book, so you already know how it's going to end. But I'm reading, I'm like, Verity is freaking psycho. Like, she is psycho. <laughs> like, she's crazy. But then I'm like, you look at Lauren and it, it had me kind of looking at her sideways because she sleepwalks and she over here taking pills and drinking alcohol. You don't do that. You you can hallucinate. So she done seen Verity like standing at the top of the stairs, looking at her, looking out the window, then her crew talking to Verity. But last time we checked, Verity could not, she couldn't talk. But on the low, she was talking to crew. And she knew nobody would believe Crew because Crew was five. And five-year-olds have a great imagination. Trust me, I know, because I used to work with kids. I was an educator. They have great imaginations. So she knew if, if Crew says I'm up here talking, they're not going to believe him because he's five. <laughs> like, duh. But every time Lauren asks Crew a question, it's like Crew like had a psychotic episode or something. And they barely touched on that, too, because you see pictures of your sisters and you psych out. You need to do you. And they put him back in therapy because that's what he needed. You're grieving your twin sisters. That's no longer here. But then on top of that, when Lauren start, Lauren starts asking um, crude questions like, oh, like, does your mom talk to you? Da, da, da. And then you cut yourself in your mouth. Crazy. Who just. That was just so like, and maybe I'm like being dramatic about it. I don't know. But just like, what? First of all, what, like what drives you to push a knife into your gums? Like I, it's just, uh. so it gave, it gave crazy. So boom, I know I didn't skip like a whole like piece, but at this point, Lauren has read Verity's entire manuscript and she just she just knows deep down in her heart that Verity is faking it. Verity can walk. Verity can talk. Verity has just been dragging this on for so long. But this is where the twist comes in, y'all. Like, I was just blown away. I was just blown away. 
So Lowen finds these baby monitors, sets it up so she can see Verity move, so she can tell Jeremy. So after that whole situation with Crew cutting his mouth and Jeremy having to take him to the hospital to get stitches, Lowen is freaking out. She set the baby monitor up. She's like, man, like, I got to catch this lady, whatever. Jeremy and Crew comes back and... I think, I don't know what, I don't know if she was packing up or something. I, I really can't remember that part. But she looked at the baby monitor, seen Verity on her hands and knees. First of all, we thought you could move, sis. So she caught you in, she's like, Jeremy, Jeremy, Verity is moving. Like, I told you she was moving before when we were, you know, kissing about to have sex. Because, yes, they did have sex. And I was just like, Lauren, you are so wrong because he's still married. Verity is still very much alive. And you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. But I knew that was going to happen. Because it's just like, you can't have sex with your wife. You fell in love with Lauren after the first time you seen her. So, of course, y'all going to do it. And in the locks... On the door was a whole different thing. I think that was crazy to have a lock on the outside of the door. That's like, that's so, that's, it's giving psychopath. Because what? I'll put a lock on, out, on the outside of the door so you can't get out. Now you got me locked up. Like, just imagine if you was a serial killer. Uh, anyways. So, boom, Jeremy comes back with crew. And Lauren's like, Verity's moving. Verity's moving. Like, go, go. Like, go. She's moving. By the time he get upstairs, Verity back in the bed, knocked out. <laughs> and I was cracking up. I was like, Verity, Verity said, you ain't gonna catch me. <laughs> so he was like, man, Lord, like you tripping. Like, I want you to leave. Like, I can't have this around crew. Da, 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 da. She's like, no, read this manuscript right here. Read it. Read it and you'll see. He read the manuscript. And he was like, Verity, like, I know, I, I know you can walk. I know you can talk. Like, get up. He was like, if you don't get up, like, I'm taking crew and I'm leaving. Like, bye. <laughs> she was all like, Jeremy. He was all like, really? Like, how could you do this? Da -da -da. Like, you've been faking this whole time. And he started choking her. And at that moment, I was like, oh, he gonna kill her. Like, he gonna kill her. Before I knew what I knew, right? And so Lauren's like, choke her, make her throw up. Like, it, you know, it seemed like she died in her sleep. And without a fight, this man killed his wife. I said, uh-uh, something's not right. Something's not right. Something's not right. Something's not right. Boom. And, and like, that, like, very dead. Crew, heartbroken, his mama gone. Jeremy's heartbroken to the public. Lowen left immediately that following day. And then it goes to the epilogue. Lowen is seven months pregnant with a baby girl. Because they had unprotected sex. I knew it as soon as she was like, I put the pillow under my hip so the so what he put in me wouldn't spill out. I'm like, oh, she wants to, she wants to get pregnant by him. Like she already knew. He already knew. One, he he told her he didn't have protection. Two, he told she told him that she wasn't on the pill. So which I think was gonna happen. Like if y'all didn't think she was gonna wasn't gonna get pregnant. I can't believe y'all because I already knew that. <laughs> but I didn't think Verity was going to be dead, though, to be honest. So she's pregnant. They go back to the house to pack up what's left. And Crew's like, wait a minute. Like, I had pictures that I colored for my mom and she put it in the floor. And then Lauren's like, what do you mean she put it in the floor? What's in the floor? Like, what's, what's, what's there? So Crew goes, he gets it, but he didn't put the wood back all the way. And... Lauren reaches in and she finds this letter that Verity wrote to Jeremy. And she's all like, I hope you find this letter, Jeremy. But if not, I hope it makes its way to you. So in the letter, she goes on to say that her agent told her to write from a villain's perspective. And so she decided to write from her perspective as a villain. So life events, so Chaston's death. Harper's death, the night they met, um, when Crew was born, and everything was just so ugly and like icky and like psychotic and just it was just crazy. 
And she was just like, I didn't do none of that. Like, I was just writing from a villain's perspective because that's what my agent told me to do. And she was like, I heard, like, I heard when you were making love to her and I locked the door from the outside. Crazy. What? I ain't knew it. He told my son, Jeremy told my son, um, if you slam the door hard enough, it can latch from the outside. <laughs> Go. I can see that with an old house, but a, with a brand new lock. Come on now. So I already knew Verity had locked the door from the outside. She was all like, I was going to make my escape. Like, I've been trying to find a manuscript to make my escape with crew. Da, 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 da. And so now at this point, Lauren like got to the end of this letter. Oh, wait, let's re rewind it. So Jeremy had found the manuscript and I don't think it was finished. He found, oh no, no, no. I'm confusing myself. The manuscript was finished and he found the manuscript before, before Verity had got in her car accident. He found the manuscript and so he thought that she had killed Harper. Again, I still don't know if it was true or not. Because that's, I guess that's what Colleen wanted to like, how she wanted it to end. But he found a manuscript, read it. He tried to kill Verity. <laughs> he taped her mouth, taped her hands, feet, was in her car. Untaped her mouth, untaped her feet in her hands. She had a car accident. He tried to kill her, y'all, because of this manuscript. She faked her injury to a certain extent so he would feel bad and wouldn't kill her. So he, Jeremy had tried to kill Verity beforehand. And so I believe when Lauren was like, here, read the manuscript. Da -da 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 -da. He, he had already read it. He already knew what was going on. He already knew. <laughs> like, he already knew. So that's why I said Jeremy was psychotic. Crew was psychotic, even though he was five, but still... Lon was psychotic because of like just her past just a little bit and then her telling like Jeremy like kill your wife like uh kill her <laughs> and then Verity was psycho for doing all of that and then just just it was just creepy like I feel like this would be a great movie a great lifetime movie that's the vibe that it gave me and at the end of the book and Lauren just never told Jeremy about the letter. I wouldn't have either because that would that would have confused a lot of things. Like we we done killed your wife, but you tried to kill her before, and y'all just crazy. Like that's just so. This book, on a scale from one to ten, and it being my first book, I want to say I give it a eight out of ten. I love the cover. I love the storyline. I wish they would have gave Crew a little bit more. I wish they would have gave Lauren a little bit more. Um, a little bit more of a background. But all, other than that, this was a great psychotic smut thriller read. <laughs> of, you know, first good read of 2023. So, yeah. Let me know, y'all comments on this book make sure y'all like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video <laughs> bye <laughs>